for this is your the will, your will for our lives, God. And so I thank you for causing us to shift this morning. Thank you for those who made the shift. God, hallelujah. For it's about the kingdom. It's about preaching and pressing. And so we just thank you this morning for those who pressed this morning. Glory to God. It's kind of not robbery to just adjust it. It's coming a little early to be with you. And so we just thank you this morning for who you are, what you are, and what you have done, what you're going to do, and glory to God, and what you're doing even now, God. And we just give you all the glory, all the honor, give you all the praise, for we set our minds on things above and not on things below. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And so we say yes to your will, yes to your way, and we say yes to you every day. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, let's just go ahead and get ready to praise the worship. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. We are the chosen Jenna. The devil's a liar. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We bless your name, God. Hallelujah. Mm. Thank you, Father God. We are a chosen generation. Been called forth to show his excellence. All I require for life, God has given me. I know who I am. I know who God says I am. What he says I am. And where he says I'm at. I know who I am. I know who God says I am. And what he says I am. Where he says I'm at. I know who I am. I'm walking in power. I'm walking in miracles. I live a life of favor. I know who I am. I'm walking in power. I'm walking in miracles. I live a life of favor. And I know who I am. Oh, 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 I know who I am. Oh, 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 I know who I am. We are a chosen generation, been called for to show his excellence. All I require for life. God has given me, I know who I am. Not working, it's all good. We are a chosen generation, been called forth to show his excellence. Help me out, Liberty. All I require for life, God has given me, I know who I am. I know who God says I am, what he says I am, and where he says I'm at. I know who I am. I know who God says I am. Yes. What he says I am. And where he says I'm at. I know who I am. I'm walking in power. I'm walking in miracles. I live a life of favor. And I know who I am. I'm walking in power. I'm walking in miracles. I live a life of favor. I know who I am. Oh, 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 I know who I am. Oh, 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 I know who I am. I know who God says I am, what he says I am, and where he says I'm at. I know who I am. I know who God says I am, what he says I am. Where he says I'm at, yes, I know who I am. Take a look at me, I'm a wonder. It doesn't matter what you see now. Can you see his glory? I know who I am. Take a look at me, I'm a wonder. It doesn't matter what you see now. Can you see his glory? I know who I am. Take a look at me, I'm a wonder. It doesn't matter what you see now. Can you see his 
his glory. I know who I am. Take a look at me. I'm a wonder. It doesn't matter what you see now. Can you see his glory? I know who I am. I know who God says I am. Come on, declare it. What he says I am. Where he says I'm at. I know who I am. I know who God says I am. What he says I am. And where he says I'm at. I know who I am. I know who God says I am. What he says I am. And where he says I'm at. I know who I am. I know who God says I am. And what he says I am. And where he says I'm at. I know who I am. Hallelujah. All right, we don't need no music. Remember, we bring the worship to the music. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. God is able to do just what he said he would do. He's going to fulfill every promise to you. So don't give up on God. Cause he won't give up on you. He's able. Hallelujah. Come on, just marinate on that. Say la, he's able. He's able. Hallelujah. Yes. Glory, glory. Come on, God is able to do. God is able to do just what he said he would do. He's going to fulfill. He's going to fulfill every promise to you. Don't give up on God. So don't give up on God. Because he won't give up on you. He's able. Yes. Selah. Hallelujah. He's able. Glory to God. He's able. He's able. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory, glory. Oh, ho, 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 ho,
Thank you, God. We're we going to take authority, amen, because I want to hear some music, amen. We got amen. Time, so we're we not settling, amen. If not, we'll put something on. The devil is not winning today. Because right. God's able. Come on, Yes, bro. he God, is. God. He's not calling the shot, y'all. We are. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Right. Right. We Lord. are. Hallelujah.
Outside of God's will in defeat. That's I'm at another right. level and I'm nowhere I'm, we, we're going as a covenant. Amen. That's why I said we're not settling without music. The devil would have won. He's getting no glory. No, no more, glory. y'all. Come no on. Glory. No glory. Come on, somebody. We're taking a card in every area. Amen. Amen. And because we said we're going to short the service, we're going to obey God. We still going to do right. everything He told us to do. And Amen. that's the mindset. We got to do. How are we going to sing songs like he's able and then he's not able? Come on, glory to God. Come on. Come on. Uh, come on. All right. I'm tired of religion. I'm tired Amen. of playing church, y'all. God is real. Yes. Amen. Come yes. on. Every area. Every limb. Every limb. Every limb. Every limb. Come on. Every little thought. Glory to God. You got to get Hallelujah. serious because as a man thinking, so is he. So listen, so that he gets right. no glory. Glory to God. And the trust that we do. From this day forward, he's yeah. under yeah. our feet. Glory. That's why we're healed. That's why yeah. we're financially blessed. Ain't yeah. nothing he can do to stop us. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Know, you Bob me. Smith says this thing called, I love you. Ain't nothing you can do about it. Well, yeah. God loves us, and ain't nothing the devil can do to stop those God loves. Oh, yeah. We stop ourselves with our negative thinking and our lack of faith. Hallelujah. Look oh. at the biggest thing you got in your way this morning and say, I'm more than a conqueror. I'm Come on. Glory to God. I'm an overcomer, praise God. My best things are ahead of me. This is the thing that the Lord has made. I am headed to my wealthy place. I am headed to my healing. No, no. I am I am wealthy. I'm not headed there. I am already there, praise God. Glory, glory. Ta-da, I sop, ta-da, no bullshit. Oh, glory to God. God didn't bring up his car to hang up. Yes, yes. Looked like it was over for Kyle and all them years. And I don't know when it last time, but she kept pressing, kept pressing. It ain't the same no more. Glory to God. How did God did it? Come on. Sometimes he'll do a but he'll come in there and suddenly, come on, somebody bust up what you wanted suddenly and make it seem like it was sudden because he'll just come in and just blow your mind. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on. Give God something to work with. He needs faith. He need people, he need two who will say, yeah, he's we more than able. He yeah, don't need two, we like grasshoppers. Glory yeah. to God. Be nice Hallelujah. Yeah. No, yeah. we the giants, and they like grasshoppers. Yes. Come on. Yeah. I'm going to get out the way, but I, hey, man, I, I don't cheat God. Come on, we got to, come oh, on. Yeah. Can't give our jobs and our business and all this stuff more than we give God and think it's going to work. You better stop that. Glory to God. Glory. We're going to get right into the word this morning. So see, yeah. if I wasn't a man of practice when I preach, I could easily say this service is going to be counsel. But nah, man, we pressing, y'all. Come on, glory. Amen. Actually, I like the nine o'clock better anyway. That's just me. I'm just saying, hey, amen. <laughs> Get the rest of our day. So we're going to turn it over to Goldilocks up there. I'm sorry, uh, Pastor Kyle. Hey, man. She said, you call me what you want now. And I'm paid. Glory to God. Yeah. I got a new attitude. Hey, man. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Come on, y'all. How many know we all supposed to have a new attitude? We're supposed to have the mind of Christ. Hey, this is mind me and you. This attitude being you with this also in Christ Jesus. I got a new attitude. Go, girl. Hallelujah. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To my spiritual parents and my covenant family, I count it an honor 
to be before you to share what God has given me. I just want to say that it's every time I come on the window pane, as Bishop Nick says, I get a, it's like it's almost, it's just an encouraging thing because what it shows me is that, yeah, Carolyn, all you say is true. And I know y'all won't get tired of me saying it, but I'm gonna keep saying it. I know what this covenant is all about because that last song you played plays right into my message. Mm -hmm. So that's nothing but the Holy Spirit. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we want to thank you for this day. Thank you for the service that we are having. We thank you for the Holy Spirit that is leading us. Thank you for bringing us together. Thank you for each one of us who found time to be here. We call upon you to continue revealing yourself to us. Thank you for allowing me to speak today to your people. I ask you to bless the words that you have given me. Let them not see me, but see you through me. Thank you for your love and care and pray in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, amen. amen. For this morning, I'm going to be moving around 1 Corinthians chapter 12 through 14. But my emphasis will really be on chapter 13. Now we all know this chapter as the love chapter. For some time this covenant has preached, teached and exhibited love consistently. So I thought I would just jump right into the fray, okay? Amen. God has been good to his people. He has given us more than we ever deserved. Think of it. He provided a means of salvation that will save the vilest sinner. He has given us so many precious promises and he stands by every one of them. When a person comes to Jesus for salvation, the Holy Spirit gives them spiritual gifts so that God might use them for his glory in his kingdom work. First Corinthians 12 and seven tells us the Holy Spirit displays all of us. The Holy Spirit displays God's power through each of us as a means of helping the entire church. So in essence, what they're saying is that all the spiritual gifts have their place in the work of the body of Christ. They all serve to edify the body and to glorify the Lord. We each have been gifted in a special, unique fashion by the Holy Spirit. Some gifts like tongues and healing have been blown out of proportion. Other gifts like giving and helps have not been given nearly enough attention. The greatest, most essential gift that God gave his church, the gift that contains the most divine power is the gift of his love working in us and through us. I have a Bible called the book and I wanted to use it for my scriptures but I couldn't find it in Bible Gateway. So I'm gonna be using the living Bible. His love was placed within us when we were saved by his grace. That's Rome and it's Romans five verses four through five. And it says, and patience develops strength of character in us and helps us trust God more each time we use it until finally our hope and faith are strong and steady. Then when that happens, we are able to hold our heads high, no matter what happens, and know that all is well. For we know how dearly God loves us, and we feel this warm love everywhere within us, because God has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. Now, I was really aiming for verse 5. But this scripture, this book starts, it says, then when that happens. So if I had to just started that, then when what happens? So I had to give you four and five. His love working in us and displayed one to another is the greatest testimony we have to a lost world. John 13, 35 says, your strong love for each other will prove to the world that you are my disciple. When we walk in love for one another, 
we are walking in obedience to the Lord. Verse 34 says, and so I am giving you a new commandment to you now. Love each other just as much as I love you. Not just love them, but just as much as he loved us. When we walk in love one for another, we prove that we are saved for his grace. If we love other Christians, it proves that we have been delivered from hell and given eternal life. But a person who doesn't have love for others is headed for eternal death. In some versions, it says to love the brethren. But I also want to just, I know we're not supposed to add or take away, but I just want to put this little addendum. I think we should be able to love everybody, our fellow man, period. One of the problems in the church of Corinth was they were manifesting nearly every spiritual gift in existence, but they were not walking in love for one another. The Corinthians loved the flashy gifts. They loved tongues, prophecy, and other gifts that made them look spiritual in the eyes of others. God was more interested in them coming to the place where they loved one another like he loved them. Chapters 12 through 14 were written to combat the problems that existed in Corinth related to the spiritual gifts and their uses in the church. While we think of these chapters as standalone chapters, they really should be read together. Chapter 12 talks about the spiritual gifts and how they are given to us and why they are beneficial to the whole body of Christ. Chapter 12 also speaks about how the body of Christ is strengthened and blessed when individuals use their gifts that have been given by the Lord. Chapter 14 deals with the misuse of the signs of tongues and healings. In the middle is chapter 13. It follows on the heels of chapter 12, which closes with this statement in verse 31. But covet earnestly the best gifts, and yet show I unto you a more excellent way. Read it this way. You are coveting the best gifts, but I show you a much better way. Chapter 13 talks about what matters most. Thus the title of my message, what matters most. I wanna let you know that this message was God really speaking to me. But as you know, we have to be partakers of the message so that we can bring it forth with conviction. What matters most is not whether you possess some flashy gift or not. What matters most is not how smart you are. What matters most is not how wealthy, not how popular, not how famous, not how well liked you are. What matters most is how well you love. When you learn to love like Jesus loves, you have discovered what matters most. I'm not gonna preach. I might do a little teaching, but I just wanna, cause I know I'm talking to the choir, but I just wanna share some things cause sometimes we can know stuff, but sometimes we gotta just shake it up, you know, shake up that, get, remind us, hello, hello. Cause the older we get, you know, we, mm, anyway. Chapter 13, verses 1 through 3, talks about love's distinction. The whole idea of these verses is that love is in a distinct form and superior to anything we can be or do. Regardless of what we do, if it is not infused with and carried out through the love of God, it is a colossal waste of time. Verse one says love is higher than the sensational. You may be a great speaker, but that is no substitute for love. No matter how great your oratory, how beautiful your speech, how brilliant your rhetoric, without love, you are simply a clanging symbol. Have you ever been to a symbol solo? I can assure you it is not very exciting. No matter what you say or how you say it, it is nor how accurate it may be. Without love, it is just noise. Without love, truly, talk is cheap. You see, 
Great oratory can move a person's emotions. Great rhetoric can move a person's mind. A great speech can move a person's will, but only great love can move a person's heart. Oratory can move one to tears, but only love can move one to Jesus. The bottom line is this. These were the same instruments used in heathen worship. Therefore, the person who exercises his tongue in a spiritual fashion, yet does not do with the love of God in him, that person is no better than a heathen worshiper. In fact, his worship is man-centered and not God-centered. Verse two says, love is higher than the spectacular. This verse mentions several spectacular abilities, but even if a person was able to do all these things and he did not have the love of God in his heart, he was nothing. Verse three talks about love is higher than the sacrificial. We can give away everything we own. We can even give up our bodies on the altar of martyrdom. Emphasis is clear. When love is absent, the Christian is no better than a heathen, that's verse one. He is nothing, that's verse two. And he can expect nothing, that's verse three. Regardless of what others may think of us, our abilities or our gifts, without love, it is all a spectacular waste of time. Verses four through 12 talks about love's description. In these verses, Paul gives us an in-depth description of love. He reveals all of his characteristics to us. These are truths that we need to be reminded of continually. Verses four to six features love's features. Paul shows us the many sides of true godly love. As if love were a great and brilliant diamond, he holds it up before us and reveals its many facets. As he does, the person of God is revealed in each gleam of light from the surface of love. Verse four, suffereth long. The, this word means patient endurance under provocation. The literally meaning of the word is long tempered. This characteristic of love reveals the truth that love does not retaliate. Stephen is an example of this type of love and that's in Acts 7, 54 through 60. And the greatest example of that is the Lord Jesus. And that can be found in Luke 23, 34 and Isaiah 53 and seven. This kind of love endures all attacks. One of Abraham Lincoln's most outspoken enemies was a man named Edwin J. Stanton. Now y'all know I couldn't get past this without doing a story. Stanton called Lincoln a low cunning clown and the original gorilla. He even said this, it is ridiculous for people to go to Africa to see a gorilla when they could find one easily in Springfield, Illinois. To Lincoln's credit, he never responded to these insults. Yet when he was elected president, Lincoln chose Stanton to be his secretary of war. When asked why, Lincoln said, because he's the best man. Later, when Lincoln had been assassinated, Stanton stood by the coffin which contained Lincoln's body and said through his tears, there lies the greatest ruler of men the world has ever seen. Patient love in action won this man over in the end. Verse four talks about love is kind. This word refers to active goodness that goes forth in behalf of others. Genuine love is never hateful or mean, but it respects others and reaches out to them. The supreme example of this kind of love is God. He is kind to people despite their treatment of him. Verse four also talks about envy if not, True love is not jealous over the abilities, successes, or possessions of others. Instead of being jealous when others prosper or excel, love is pleased when they do well. 
Jealousy is one of the vilest sins that we harbor in our hearts. It was Eve's jealousy of God that motivated her to take the forbidden fruit. It was jealousy that put Daniel in the lion's den. It was jealousy that put Joseph in the pit. Yet godly love is never jealous. Rather, it is pleased when others succeed. Verse four also talks about vaintive, not, vaunteth not itself. Literally, this free phrase means does not make a parade. Love does not brag. It does not draw attention to itself or to what it is doing. Love does not have to be the center of attraction. Verse four also says it is not puffed up. Love is not arrogant or proud. It realizes that all it has and all that it is has been given to it by God. No matter how great our talents or how spectacle our gifts, everything that we are is the result of divine grace. Thus, love is humble because it remembers where it was before grace found it. It realizes where it would be apart from the grace of God. Verse five, does not behave itself unseemly. Love is never rude, but it always treats others with compassion, consideration, and respect. Love controls the emotions. It is not friendly one day and rude the next. Genuine love always makes Jesus look good. Verse five, seeketh not her own. True love is never selfish or self-centered, but it is actively interested in what will profit others. It never looks at itself first, but it always considers ahead another ahead of itself. Jesus is the prime example of this attitude in action. And this is how each of us is to be. Don't be selfish. Don't live to make a good impression on others. Be humble, thinking of others as better than yourself. Don't just think about your own affairs, but be interested in others too and in what they are doing. Your attitude should be the kind that was shown by Jesus Christ. Love ever gives, forgives, outlives, and ever stands with open hands. And while it lives, it gives for this is love's prerogative to give and give and give. That's a poem by John Axenham. Verse five says it is not easily provoked. True love keeps no record of evils done to it, but is willingly endures all slights and injuries. This characteristic of love reminds us that love does not demand its own rights. It is willing to, to yield the, to the will of another. True love only responds in anger to that which angers God. All others, things are handled through active, complete, and immediate forgiveness. Stephen Alfred tells of a Baptist pastor during the American Revolution. Peter Miller, who lived in Euphrates, Pennsylvania, and enjoyed the friendship of George Washington, in Ephrata also lived Michael Whitman, an evil-minded sort who did all he could to oppose and humiliate the pastor. One day, Michael Whitman was arrested for treason and sentenced to die. Peter Miller traveled 70 miles on foot to Philadelphia to plead for the life of the traitor. No, Peter, General Washington said, I cannot grant you the life of your friend. My friend, exclaimed the old preacher, he's the bitterest enemy I have. What, cried Washington, you walked 70 miles to save the life of an enemy? That puts the matter in a different light. I'll grant your pardon, and he did. Peter Miller took Michael Whitman back home to a freighter, no longer an enemy, but a friend. Verse five also talks about thinketh no evil. Love takes no worthless inventory. Two thoughts are in mind here. First, genuine love does not attribute evil motives to people. The actions of others are not seen in their most negative light. 
Love always thinks the best of others. Second, genuine love does not dwell what others, with what others may have done. Real love does not remember in injury. Real love does not believe all it hears about another. Real love does not look for fault in others. In this ad, if this attitude was practiced in the church, it would solve nearly all of the church's problems. Someone once said, it is natural to love them that love us, but it is supernatural to love them that hate us. Verse six also talks about rejoiceth not in iniquity. Love does not rejoice in sin, whether it is its own sin or the sin of others. Love hates sin. Love does not rejoice when another falls into sin. Whether we admit it or not, there's a part of us that is glad when another believer falls because we think it makes us look better. That is why we just have to tell someone else about it. It's called gossip, guys. True love does not gossip or rejoice when another believer falls, but it hurts with the injured member. Verse six talks about rejoiceth in the truth. While love hates all forms of evil, it loves the truth. It rejoices when truth is proclaimed and when truth wins the victory. Love is glad for the truth, even when the truth hurts. Love is glad when truth wins the day. Verses seven through 12 talks about love's fortitude. These verses tells us of love's staying power. Love is a remarkable thing that never wavers nor fails. Verse seven says it beareth all things. Love patiently endures and overlooks the fault in others. The word beareth literally means to cover. Instead of parading the failures and faults of others before all the world, love covers them over and continues to love in spite of those things. This is how God loves us. During the 17th century, Oliver Cromwell, Lord Protector of England, sentenced a soldier to be shot for his crimes. The execution was to take place at the ringing of the evening curfew bell. However, the bell did not sound. The soldier's fiance had climbed into the belfry and clung to the great clapper of the bell to prevent it from striking. When she was summoned by Cromwell to account for her actions, she wept as she showed him her bruised and bleeding hands. Cromwell's heart was touched and he said, your lover shall live because of your sacrifice. Curfew will not ring tonight. Love beareth all. Verse seven says, believeth all things. Love always places the best possible interpretation on everything that happens. It does not always seek the most negative answer, but it believes that good will triumph in any situation. Basically, love trusts, love believes, and love was, has confidence in the one loved. Verse seven also talks about hopeth all things. Love always expects the best popular, possible outcome. Love refuses to accept failure. What did Apostle just say today? The devil will not win. <laughs> we will have music. We have power over him. We expect the best possible outcome all right now. Love is the eternal optimist. Love always holds out that things will work out right in the end. Number, verse seven also talks about endureth all things. This is a military term and it means that love does not give up the fort. It stands at ground and continues in spite of everything that can be thrown against it. It continues in spite of persecution and ill treatment. Love bears the unbearable, believes the impossible, holds on to the incredible and never gives up. The word stop does not exist in the vocabulary of love. Verses eight through 12 talks about charity, which is another word for love, never faileth. 
when everything else in this world has passed away, when everything that is held, is held us, such high esteem is gone. When knowledge and spiritual gifts no longer matter, love will still exist. It is the great constant throughout eternity. There are times when love may lose a battle. If that in, in that the object of one's love may never return that love. Yet, while it may lose a battle here and there, love has already won the war. The idea here is not about success. The idea is one of endurance. When other things have been removed from view, there will still be love. It does not give in, give up, or give out. Love that is real is love that lasts. We talked about love's distinction. We talked about love's description. Now, verse 13 talks about love's durability. The Bible says that three things abide, faith, hope, and love. Yet faith and hope are encompassed inside of love. Therefore, the greatest of all things a believer can possess is love. If our love is right, then faith is no problem. If your love is right, then our hope is in the right place. When our love is right, then we are right. What makes love so great? Well, love is the defining characteristic of who God is. First, uh, first John 4, 8 tells us that God is love. When the Bible wanted to describe God in one sentence, it said, God is love. God does not have faith. After all, who would God put his faith in? God does not have hope. What would one who controls everything possible have to hope for? Yet God is love. Therefore, we are never more godlike than when we learn to love like God. To be like God, we must learn to love like God. When we can do this, our world will be altered for his glory. And in conclusion, I just want to say, for this moment, take all the things you value today and lay them aside. Forget about your talents, your intelligence, your gifts, your potential, your achievements, and anything else you want to mention. Now, forgetting all those other things, how well do you love? Do you love others like God loves them? Someone said, what is love? It is silence when your words would hurt. It is patience when your neighbors curt. It is deafness when a scandal flows. It is thoughtfulness for others' woes. It is promptness when stern duty calls. It is courage when misfortune falls. Is there room for improvement in your love life? Or so you have, think you have it all figured out. If you need to talk to him about your love life, the time to do it is right now. Let's ask him to help us love like he loves. Heavenly Father, I just thank you for this opportunity, Lord. I just ask you right now that everyone is within my sound and my voice, Lord, that we learn to love like you, that we understand how important the love is that we have for one another. Lord, if we could just learn to love, this world would be a better place. So we thank you right now for giving us this insight. We ask you that we leave these pains with different uh, thoughts about love and, and being a Christian. And Lord, we ask all these things in your son Jesus' name. Amen. I'm done. Amen. Woo, Amen. Oh, goodness. Well, and I just want to thank you because, um, you know, you said you preached into the choir. I know that's just something everybody say, but I know a lot of choirs where they wasn't walking in love. So Amen. you were preaching to the right crowd this morning because yeah. um, the Holy Spirit wouldn't have give you, it wouldn't give you a message. Amen. That's not for the people you're ministering to. He just mm -hmm. doesn't operate like that. And so we just all look straight so you didn't know what, you know, you ain't know you, what you were talking about. <laughs> We're we getting good at that, amen. You're talking to everybody. I believe God is saying the same thing. The other thing too, every time you speak, that's your book. It's almost like, you know, it's a book speaking. It's like yeah. a book, the audio of a book. And, and yeah. so that's gonna be easy for that thing to flow. We thank God for you. 
Uh, and then when Monette sang that song, Prophet Monette sang that song this morning, oh, I need you, yeah. you need me. You know, that, that was the beginning of communion this morning. Um, I just want everybody to hear me, because then you said something also, Carolyn. We all need to examine our love walk. So what we going to do, I want everybody to take communion in your own house today. Amen. Because I want you to examine your love walk. Amen. You know? Because, you know, come on, we can't just keep trying to take it any kind of way. Yes. And I know that, you know, she kind of did an altar call without doing an altar call. And that's what we're going to do. So I don't care if you do it at 3 o'clock. Make sure you do it today. Every house, do communion. Make sure everything and everybody in your house is on the same page, one accord. This was all, This was nothing but the will of God. You know, because um, we did a funeral a couple of years ago. I didn't know my family was all discombobulated. At the end, my wife would tell you, the Holy Spirit had me tell the musician, play this song. My mother said to me, how did you know? It was my mom's brothers and sisters. She said, they came into the funeral not speaking and all this. I didn't know. And I said, but the Holy Ghost, just like the Holy Ghost told you to do this today. Because just like I didn't know, the Holy Spirit know all things. We needed this message. Yes. That part on giving, y'all know I'm the biggest giver out there. But there's times I must admit, she's like, why are they calling me three in the morning? And that, and see, givers give. Love causes you to give. And so I thank God, you know what I mean? Like even right after this service, I can't wait to give. That's what we do. The thing you said that is being emphasized the least, not in this company. But even a giver can sometimes get frustrated when you look at yourself. Man, I got this one on. Pipe just blew up. And then it seems like every time something goes wrong with you, everything, everybody's pulling on you. And that's the Holy Spirit also saying, let me see your real attitude. Are you really a cheerful giver? So I want you to know, as much as I give, and anybody, anybody know how much I give, when I come up into the giant, they already know who you send it to today. But every once in a while, I'll tell you this here, it's not that I'm self, I'm like, oh, man, you know, I gotta get in there, get in line. I gotta walk 70 miles. I don't walk 70 miles. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, but stand in that line and go through the, the machines always breaking when I gotta send the after, but I stay in there. I went making by with my daughter one time. I don't know if y'all remember in Virginia. We went to that supermarket. We tried to send money to Africa. The machine broke on us. <laughs> See, like it happened to me everywhere, not only in Pittsburgh, but I still keep going and say, why? Because love doesn't think about itself. So I thank you for that because it got my attitude. I can't wait to give to mission today. Amen. So that's what we're going to do. Amen. Glory. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap for that. <laughs> Hallelujah. So at this time, we are going to do our missions. Um, you know, praise God. I, I, I don't know. Take what's for you. Amen. Because, you know, I know the Holy Spirit. Come on, I don't care where we are. Nobody's perfect on this side of glory. You know, come on. You heard me say the other night, man, I looked at this, this guy, looked at me, what, what, why are you looking at me? He just said, I'm admiring the beauty of this night. What if I done blew my testimony? We got to walk in love. What if the whole church walked like God? How's that walked in love? I tell you what, we'll overcome evil with good. Amen. We'll turn this place upside down if we can just perfect our love walk. Can you say amen? Amen. 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 Um, Pastor Marvin Winans did a, did a song. It's called Perfecting Church. And it, the song is like, what a church we would be if we had it all together, if we had our love walk right. What a church. Mm -hmm. well, get that song. We're gonna hear that tomorrow because because I know that's where God wants us. We gotta get this love walk together. Somebody say amen. And guess where it starts at, y'all? In your home. You get all the practice you want in your home. Whether you married or not, you got kids, you got a dog, something in there to challenge your love walk. Dog potty train, but he decided he wanna go on the floor. <laughs> love walk. Amen. amen. Remember my dog ate my son's cheese steak. I never <laughs> see my son. Lose, no, no, no. It, lose it like that, man. He, I thought he was going to kill that dog. Like, oh, man. Oh, wait, like, like Larry and the bacon. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, let's not even go there. <laughs> little Larry, y'all, not big Larry. No, <laughs> little, little Larry. Larry. Little Larry took somebody's bacon mix we was out eating. <laughs> <laughs> and the other family is supposed to be spiritual. They they lost, they lost <laughs> their spirituality <laughs> over bacon. <laughs> That's we gotta have God's love, bacon love. We can't even overcome bacon attack. Come on, how are we gonna witness for? I'm serious. Remember, they lost it. They did. That was over true. some nasty. I hot bacon. I hot bacon. It was. Uh, let's, let's pray over the offering until we get out of here because we got a women's conference in like three minutes. Uh, good word, my God. Good word. Yes. Yes. Pray, pray, pop. 
I just want to say unto you, Pastor Carolyn, I even want to call you sometimes Bishop Carolyn. <laughs> Amen. Outstanding word. Uh, love is something that we need. As Apostle did challenge, try your household. I like to take it a step further. Before you can do your household in love, you got to know how to do you in love. Because if you don't have the love of God in you, how are you going to get to anybody else? Amen. So we Amen. have to come to that, that, that area of understanding about love and agape love, mm-hmm. not just this other love. So yes. we used to teach, I think, Pastor Apostle, you might know about that. I think about 15 years ago, we used to teach from a book called The Five Love Languages. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, oh, you know, which one you got? Which language you rolling in? So we encourage you, Pastor Fire and George, your, your, uh, your, your preached and taught message. And we just say, keep going. You're doing all right in Christ. Go ahead, Pop. Go ahead, man. Amen. That's good stuff. Amen. Glory to God. We did good on time. And, and that's why I said whether you're married or not, that means if you're single, then it's you. But if you're married, amen, you know, first you can't love somebody else until you love. So, um, and that's why I really practice in your home. Come on. Amen. Because. Amen. Hey, we, we we can't be public, try to be public success stories and private failures. Come on. It's not going to work. Amen. You know what I mean? Stop front. We ain't got a front, y'all. Amen. Amen. Pastor Cordy, you look beautiful. And we're going to be on the screen. Yeah. Yeah, she's ready to see y'all now. She had to go to another but, church service. Mom, that made me cry. I think I put makeup on for a change. I might have messed it up. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Cry, Monette. No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, not sorry. But listen, hey, guys, did everyone get the link? Um, I apologize. I don't know what's going on with my groups, but um, I've been sending out text messages for days, and people have not been getting them. If, have you or have you not? I don't know because no one responds, so I'm assuming they have not been getting so we'll figure that out. But everyone has the link for this afternoon. I mean, this morning. Good. For right now. So that's why I'm ready to pray. So I can release you. I sent it to you yesterday. Hope you want me to send it again. Uh, if right, you need. It. Amen. Okay. If you need the link, just wave your hand. If you got the link, wave your hand. If you have the link, wave your hand. Okay. For the one that All right, we good. And I believe most of you got it because everybody on this morning. Thank everybody for moving with the Holy Spirit. So, Father, in Jesus' name, we just thank Thank you for the service. Thank you for the woman of God who gave us the bread of life. What a breakfast to wake up to, the bread of life. Better than French toast, any other toast. We had some God toast this morning. So we thank you this morning. Glory to God for that word. Wow, what a a awakening. Better than coffee. Better than tea. Glory to God. We had you, Lord. Now we pray on this offering, God. We ask that you bless it, multiply it. Glory to God. And we just pray a harvest to come back to those who gave and Lord. But more importantly, God, continue to stretch this ministry and this covenant to do your will, to get out of ourselves and look to the interest of other people. For that is your mind, your will, and your attitude for us. And so now as we leave this window pane and go into another one, I pray that every woman that will be a part of that next service, God, that you'll meet every need. I pray that every man who won't be a part of that service will enjoy the rest of his day. And whatever you have for them, God, it will be fruitful and productive. And until we meet again, I pray that you keep us, guide us, protect us. But more importantly, just we embrace your love for us like never before. In Jesus' name, shalom. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, we did it, y'all. Amen. Y'all. I got to let y'all down, women go because of the traffic jam out there. What you say? Ebook on that, your ebook on Amazon. <laughs> How can I get that ebook on Amazon? Yes. All your little all right. messages. All right, I got you. All right, all right, all right. I'm working on right, it. Bye. <laughs> bye. Get off the screen so y'all can get to your other service. Love you, bye.